This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me This is my daily bread This is my daily bread, your very word spoken to me, and I Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Trinity United Church of Christ, which is now held in Jim and Sue's uh, office. So uh, we're learning a new thing together and trying something uh, different, and I want to thank Mike and Mikey for uh, being a little imaginative and um, kind of thrusting me into a role that I'm not all that happy with, which is to be videotaping myself. But um, we wanted to try and be connected to you, the church. We miss you and we love you and uh, we are here for you during this time. And so uh, we wanted to try and see if we could create a uh, way for us to connect today. So I bring you grace and peace from God, our creator, and from our master and teacher, Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit who binds us together in unity and in love. We are now gathered in our scattered places. Come, let us worship God. In this time, it's important that the church be in confession. So let us pray. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. 
We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your ways. We are misled by our pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love and we have neglected justice. We have ignored your truth. Have mercy on us, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to the paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord is rich in mercy, ready to forgive when we repent. So let us rise as God's forgiven people, set free to new life. Amen.
Church, will you join me in confessing our sins and repenting before God and one another? God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to save and seek the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice. We have ignored your truth. Have mercy, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Amen. When we repent and confess, God is quick and ready to forgive us. So in Christ, our sins are forgiven and we rise as a new people into a new life. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading comes today from Ezekiel in chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them and said, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinew on you and I will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. So I prophesied and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were the sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was net yet no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain people that they may live. I prophesied and the breath came into them and they live and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Thanks be to God for this, our faith and tradition. Good morning. This is that time when I would be inviting all of our children and youth to come forward and spend some time with me. And um, I hope you know how much I enjoy that time in the life of our worship. It's one of my favorite times. And uh, so this morning, it saddens me that we can't be face to face with one another, but I'm excited that uh, hopefully you're gathered with your families uh, and listening and sharing in this worship service together. So I just have a little word um, for you folks and you, um, today and it's really about um, being afraid and we know that at this time when everything is so uncertain and we've gone through so many changes and all of your routines have had to change and some of the things that you've really loved to do have had to be put on hold and it's all it's all kind of really sort of chaotic and a little bit um, challenging for us and sometimes we are afraid and I think we've talked about that before, but I wanted to remind us again today that um, when we get afraid, it's all right, but uh, you go and talk to somebody that you trust and love. And one of the places that I often go when I'm afraid is I go to talk to God. And I remember when my um, family would travel and we would have to go over bridges and I always have hated heights. And um, I didn't like uh, driving over bridges particularly because there was always kind of a big drop off and then lots of water. And so dad would get a little too close to the railing and I'd be freaking out in the back seat. And my mom taught me a little song um, and it goes, 
I will trust, I will trust, I will trust and not be afraid. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust and not be afraid. God is near, God is near, love is here, I won't be afraid. God is near, God is near, love is here, I won't be afraid. So I hope that little song becomes one that you kind of sing to yourself or maybe mom and mom and maybe mom and dad or somebody in your life, your grandma, somebody will sing that for you as well. And, and you can maybe learn it and sing it to yourself. I did. And over the years, that was something that carried me through many places where I was afraid, but I carried on. And it's that trusting in God, leaning on God that will get us through. So know that you are in the most loving hands that you could be in and that God is very near to all of us. Let us pray. Dear God, we miss each other, but we know that your spirit goes between us even when we are separated and connects us to one another. So be near us, watch over us, protect and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for the time together. Sorry I can't give you a treat, but uh, hopefully somebody in your household might have one ready for you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. In this season of Lent, um, in John's Gospel, this is one of the last stories that happens uh, right before Jesus enters into Jerusalem. It is the story of Lazarus, um, brother of Martha and Mary. And I'll be reading just a short section of it if you'd like to go to John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. You can find the entire story there. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Many of the Jews had come to console Mary and Martha about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even know, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Thanks be to God for this, our witness and tradition and faith. May the Lord bless to our hearing and understanding this word. Will you join with me in prayer? Holy One, open our eyes that we may see you. Open our ears that we may hear you. Guide our lives to seek your path. Amen. In today's stories, we see Ezekiel coming upon a valley of dry bones and a place where Jesus comes to Lazarus' tomb, his good friend, and Lazarus has been four days dead. Today's stories are places where life and death run smack dab into each other. So rather than quickly sprinting to a word of hope at this time, for which these stories are also filled with much hope, I invite you to stay with me for a while in this place of loss and devastation and grief. These are challenging days for us. And Ezekiel and Jesus may have something to offer. 
we don't really hear what uh, Ezekiel's response to this valley of dry bones is, but I imagine he must have been overwhelmed by the sense of devastation that he saw all around him. And as he walked through the pile of bones with the Holy Spirit, I imagine too that he was overcome by all the dreams that had been lost and all the hope that seemed to be gone. These are those places in our lives. We know Jesus's response when he got to Lazarus's grave and saw that his friend Mary was weeping and many other Jews as well who had come to console her, Jesus wept. Jesus grieved over the loss of his friend. We come to these moments in our life. Today, as we gather in our separate homes and as the first waves of what this virus might mean for our world kind of becomes a little bit more real to us, we are still in a state of shock, I think, at least I feel as if I am. We don't really know what lies ahead. So we are in that same place, it seems, of life and death running into each other. And like Jesus and Ezekiel, for me, it is a time of great grief. As I thought about grieving, I thought about our funeral services. There we engage in three acts. The first one is that we remember and we give thanks for all that God has given to us and all that we have received by the grace of God. We tell stories, we celebrate precious memories, and we go on uh, to share those stories with one another. The second thing that we must do in that time together is to begin to let go. We must learn to entrust all of our life to God. Before we move to hope, we must grieve and let things go. This is always the most challenging part of grief. We must allow those things that we love and have counted on to depart from our, the center of our lives and then allow God time to reorder the pieces of our life. Finally, when we come to a funeral, we gather to hear the promises of God's resurrection hope in Jesus. We are a people of promise that life overcomes death, that love overcomes fear, that faith overcomes despair. And so we gather as a people of the promise, holding on that God's love will prevail. And so as we go through these days, I invite you to lean into each other and also lean into God. Thanks be to God for God's presence in the midst of our grief, our darkness, and our emptiness. Amen.
His word my hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as life endures My chains are gone I've been set shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me below will be forever As we come to our time of prayer, uh, it's our custom to lift up prayers um, in our community. But as we're scattered, I would invite you to just lift up your prayers before God in silence or in your own family community uh, to lift up the people that we wish to pray for during these times. And you might remember um, those who are public servants and uh, those who are in the midst of um, being separated in very extreme ways from loved ones. So I invite you now to lift up your prayers to God. And now let us say together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And let us pray together the words that Jesus gave his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Or a maid. 
can play football in a big, big house. It's my Thanks a lot for um, coming to the service today. Uh, keep in touch with the church as you need us, and um, feel free to call myself or any of the council members if you need anything as well. Uh, we think about you, and we are praying for you in this time and place, and uh, looking forward to sort of further adventuring with you uh, in this area uh, for our worship. So I want to thank Mike and Mikey, especially Mikey. Uh, he just did so much work to get us up here and um, wanted to thank him today. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you this day and forevermore. Go in peace and love one another. Amen. Come and go with me to my father's house come and go with me to my father's house it's a big big house with lots and lots of room and a big big table with lots and lots of food and a big big yard where we can play football it's a big big house sing it again it's my father's house it's a big big house with lots and lots of room It's my father's house. Happy Sunday, everyone.